Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here, and I would like to discuss the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. Um, for those of you that have not seen the one episode of this show that I've done before, it's really just an impromptu sort of thing. Like, it's not as formal as my reviews. Like, this is what I think, and obviously no theories, because this is literally just me talking about everything I did and did not like from something that has already been completed. So, right off the top, I loved the ending. I love the whole thing. Honestly, every freaking reference that I got, I'm sure there are a bunch of references that I didn't get, but like, it was just amazing. Like from top to bottom, I was like, this is freaking awesome. Like we got a ton of different earths. We got callbacks to every, like every freaking thing that there was. The only thing they basically didn't do was have like a reference to like the black and white Batman or Superman era. That was pretty much all they did. Like that was like the last thing missing was just have like an animated character show up and be like, oh, it's like Justice League Unlimited. Like that was about, that was the only thing they missed. Like they covered like pretty much every live action version that they could get their hands on. We got to see Kevin Conroy come in, who for those of you that didn't know this, um, he was the voice actor. He's the voice actor for Batman for Batman the Animated Series as well as Batman Beyond, um, both the Justice League shows as well as um, the Batman Arkham games, except for Arkham Origins. So that was insane because it's like the voice of Batman has is officially doing some live action stuff, and that's who the older guy was. You know, when Kate met Bruce, that was Kevin Conroy, um, and that was amazing. I was like, holy crap, Kevin Conroy gets to be in here, you know, live action, and that was really cool. Um, apparently his, like, exosuit was a reference to Batman from, uh, the Kingdom Come series, just like Superman's outfit, uh, when they went to the Superman Returns world, we got two cool references, because we got Brandon Ralph Superman Returns, which is awesome, and then he was wearing the Kingdom Come outfit, and they, it was depressing, but they made it where everybody died, and this was something I didn't notice until I watched a video on it, but, excuse me, at the end, when they reset all the Earths, he doesn't have the black, uh, Kingdom Come outfit on, it's his regular, it's the classic Superman outfit. So I was like, oh, they reset it. So his family and friends didn't all get like brutally murdered by Lex Luthor. And I was like, well, that's really cool. And that was, that was a cool thing to see him at the end anyway. I just totally missed that. But it was awesome. They had Birds of Prey, which was, if I'm not mistaken, Birds of Prey was actually the very first reference. And I could not believe it when that came out. That was one of those legit moments where I was like, holy crap, Birds of Prey. Five people watched that show, including myself. I personally loved it. And it was, to me, it sucked that it got canceled. But Birds of Prey, nobody talks about that show. Nobody remembers that that even existed. Um, but I loved it. I was like, holy crap. This is like, that's Birds of Prey. Like, that's insane. So Birds of Prey, um, apparently the woman who was uh, speaking. So the woman that was running, by the way, because no one saw Birds of Prey, that's Batman's daughter. In that universe, that's his daughter. That was like the purpose of Birds of Prey. Um, it's not like the movie that's coming out. It was like the Birds of Prey were like the heroes. So it was Batman's daughter. Uh, Huntress was still in it because Huntress is always one of the birds of prey and then I think there were two other people Oracle was one of them and of course Oracle is uh Barbara Gordon after she was shot and I I think there may have been another person but it may have just been the three of them but really interesting show and it was like Batman and uh Selena's daughter and I believe she also had like powers superpowers it doesn't matter it, you know super old show got canceled into like one season uh so that was insane they, of course, did the 66 reference. So, you know, we got Robin from that. We have the 89 Keaton Batman universe was referenced. Um, the craziest reference, of course, came in the episode before last where we got to see Flash from the Justice League movies. That was definitely the craziest moment in the whole crossover. Just as a whole, that was the craziest thing because it was like, holy crap, they just did this thing that no one would have ever expected. And it's just insane. And we'll see what happens uh, going forward because they are supposed to be doing the Flash movie. It would be cool if they made this canon where it was like him going into the Speed Force and running into our version of Barry or TV Barry Allen if that was how he actually got the name. Because that's how they make that joke because of course no one calls him the Flash in the Justice League movie because he's not the Flash yet. He's just a speedster. So if they do that in the Flash movie and they show that scene... Or they at least reference it. They, they probably wouldn't show it. But if they at least referenced it, that would be amazing. And they just made it where it was like, you know, still canon. Because that's one thing that they don't do at the end. Uh, they don't say like, oh, the you know, where the other Justice League Flash was from. This is the Earth that he was on or anything like that. And it kind of technically doesn't even really make sense that it happened. It's not even supposed to work. Um, so it probably would be weird if they did 
you know, put a specific earth to it. And that's probably a little too specific. Like, they can do the other TV shows, like, on the DC Universe app or DC Nation. I always forget what that thing is called. But whatever the online service is, you know, they can reference those, but it was like, you can't reference any of the actual movies we're doing right now. You can use a clip of, like, the old movie that no one cares about for Green Lantern. Sure. Anything current, do not touch that. Don't put an earth to any of that stuff. It's just happening. But it's too far separated. They're still not allowed to, you know, get too specific with it. But that cameo was insane. Like, that was freaking amazing. So, you know, we got some epic cameos. Um, the guy who wrote the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, Marv, that's who I uh, was talking to Flash and Supergirl. And I knew he was, like, a comic writer. I was like, as soon as he showed up, and it was just this random dude was like, oh, hey, can you do this? I was like, he's somebody. I may not recognize him. I, I just knew he was somebody. And that's the writer for the uh, Crisis crossover event in the actual comic books. So that was awesome. Uh, Lucifer showing up insane crossover i could not believe that happened but i bet they were super happy that fox canceled <laughs> that fox canceled lucifer show and then netflix picked it up because well at least until hbo max comes out cw has that deal with netflix where it's like you know once the seasons go off you can watch the whole season on netflix so probably because they have that deal they were able to get that actor to come in and it wasn't like some weird legal rights because netflix already has a deal with them and it was just like, hey, can we just borrow this actor and just say he's on a different earth? And it's like, sure, you guys already have a cool deal with us. Go ahead. No weird contract disputes there. So that was awesome. I love that cameo. Jonah Hex showed up for a quick second. That was a nice little cameo. Obviously, Constantine going with the magical element. I wish he was in it more because uh, I just love Matt Ryan. I loved Constantine. I'm still, I'm still upset that the CW didn't buy Constantine when that show got canceled because I thought that show was freaking amazing. And I was always upset. I was like, how can they not pick up Constantine and just keep the show going? Everyone wanted that show to continue. But they brought him into Legends of Tomorrow, and I did lose my mind when they made that official. He was like an arrow, and then he became one of the Legends. Because um, I think he's officially a Legend now. I think he's like a series regular uh, when this new season comes up. I hope at least. Um, but I always loved I always loved Matt Ryan for that, and I thought he's like a great actor. He's perfect for Constantine. So I was super happy to see him. I wish we saw him more. And I feel like I saw his name in, like, the episode before last. I thought I saw his name as one of the guests. Or maybe it was the very last episode. And it said, like, special guest Matt Ryan. And I could have sworn I read that. And I thought I saw it in passing. And then he didn't show up in the episode. So maybe that was something little enough they left in there by mistake. And he was supposed to be in it. They just maybe cut that scene. But I was like, huh, I could have sworn I read his name. And I was looking forward to it because I was like, oh, you know. Because as soon as I see his name, I'm like, oh, that means Constantine. And aside from magic... That just means epic one-liner. So I was kind of looking forward to Constantine, and then he didn't show up. But aside from that, you know, it, it, like, it didn't really hurt the episode or anything like that. It was still a great episode. Insanely emotional. Like, the same, so it's funny. And they did it back-to-back, because -back, it was like, obviously, Oliver died in the episode before the actual finale to the crisis. And then, you know, in that scene, it's Flash, uh, I should say Barry. I always, I always switch back and forth. But it was Barry, Oliver, and Sarah. And so they were the two that were closest to Oliver, you know, out of the Paragons that were there. So it's like, you know, get us up there. They have their emotional moment where, you know, Oliver and Queen is passing away. But when they went into the next episode, because I was like, that's emotional. It's like Oliver Queen's dying. And I think maybe I wasn't the only one, but I was kind of like, ah, I don't think he's going to really die in this cross. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think he's really going to be dead. And I was like, they're going to do something because I'm like, the whole thing is that he leaves to stop the crisis and then he's gone forever and like his kids grow up in this dystopian future and all this stuff. I was like, that's just too dark. It's too sad of an ending. Like he dies and then they just don't stop anything. You know, they stop the crisis, but the world still goes on and his kids still grow up alone and they grow up in this crappy dystopian future and stuff like that. I'm like, there's no way that that's going to stay the same. Unfortunately, he does still die. But because of everything that happens with them rebirthing the universe and the specific sacrifice that he made, he's able to basically rewrite the world. And, you know, we have Earth Prime now. And, of course, with all the heroes being on the same Earth, you aren't going to get that dystopian future. You still could. I mean, that's one of that's, um, you know, that's a storyline all the time. Like, we got to stop this bad thing in the future. X-Men do it like twice a week. Something bad's always wrong with the future for the X-Men. So it's a comic book thing. But... I love the way it was handled, and then it's like, that was an emotional moment, but when Sarah went to talk to Diggle and the rest of the team, and he had, like, just, like, his eyes were bloodshot red, it was like they actually heard that somebody just died, like, that's how sad they look, like, normally people, like, cry, 
and it's like, oh, it's the generic TV crying. And then it was just like, holy crap. He looked like he was actually sad. Like, they all did. and But his eyes were just so red, and he was just had tears. And so I was like, this is insanely emotional. Like, it was just... It was probably the most emotional scene that they've had. It's, it's definitely one of them. I mean, because it's Oliver Dine. Even when parents were killed off in that show, I don't remember thinking, like, holy crap, that's, like, tears, tears. Diggle, though. Diggle, he was just so hurt. And he was just... The stuff he was saying, too, was like, you know, he died twice, and I wasn't there either time. And uh, like he was my brother and stuff. I was like, man, this is like insane. So I love that scene because I was like, I don't ever recall seeing anyone be like that torn up, you know, on the show. Like, like I said, it was really like literally his eyes were just like bloodshot red from like he was crying for so long. And I was like, that's insane. So I love that scene. It was very emotional, well done. But in general, I absolutely love this crossover. Like everything they did, I thought was super cool. Um, Smallville. I totally forgot the Smallville reference. Tom Welling was in it. Unfortunate amount. Very, very tiny. Um, I don't think he, it was either he didn't want to be in it. What the heck was that? He either didn't want to be in it or something. I, I think it was just the fact that he didn't really want to be in it. Cause I think that's one of the things he doesn't like really want to be like Superman anymore. But, oh my goodness. That was still awesome. Like just hearing about that was, you know, like him and Kevin Conroy, we're like the two like classic people, you know, coming into the show for uh, the little crossover events. So that was pretty awesome. Um, the fact that they had Erica Durant's, of course, because of course they have her um, in Supergirl. But I was like, I hope they actually have her as Lois because they have her in Supergirl. They have to be like, oh, here's, you know, Lois, Erica Durant's is Lois. And so, of course, they have her come in, and, you know, um, Clark's, you know, he mentions what happened and everything. And she's like, oh, Smallville, you made it funny and stuff like that. And I was like, that's really cool. Like they still had that moment. Um but that was awesome. I, I love that moment. I'm on the same sort of scale as everyone else. It was like, of course, it's like kind of an actor thing where he may not have wanted to do more than that. But I was still like, ah, maybe they should have done something that made it where he didn't believe it at all or just something. Because it was like Lex Luthor comes in and it's like, all right, this sounds crazy. Doesn't really make sense or anything like that. And then, or no, I think the heroes showed up first, actually. I think the heroes were the first ones to show up. And he was like, yeah, I don't really believe that. And then Lex Luthor came in and was just like, and just poofed them all away. And then he explained like the exact same thing. It was either way, both sides came to him and told him like, this is really what's happening. And of course, Lex came in trying to hit him with the kryptonite. And um, some people mentioned, there's a YouTube video about it where like the watch he's wearing, it looks like it has uh, blue kryptonite in it. Because of course, he looks at the kryptonite and he just picks it up and like, hmm, and he just chucks it. And I was like, okay, so, you know, like Lex Luthor's like, you gave up your powers. But I was like, I think he just used blue kryptonite. I don't think they're gone permanently. Um, but I thought that was awesome. I was like, that's just, it was just a funny scene. He's just like, huh. And he just chucked it. And then he punched him straight in the face. And he was like, oh, still stronger. I thought that was a really great line. But I do, of course, wish he was in it a whole lot more because Tom Willie was, you know, he was Superman, you know. So that was awesome. And it would have been amazing to see him, you know, more in the actual crossover. But either way, it was still amazing. So I absolutely love that. Um, I'm sure there's some other crossover that has gone over my head and I uh, just forgot just something like that. But Hall of Justice actually getting utilized. They made that joke a long time ago. I think I feel like that was season two maybe season possibly season three of flash i was like oh it's the hall of justice that's funny and then they actually used it and it was like it's the hall of justice for real um so they made the justice league they have the wonder twin thing because they had gleek at the end um so we got earth two for star girl we got this stuff for green lantern coming up uh superman is getting his own show so i'm curious about that as far as the weird stuff with lex luther because i thought he was the one at the end of the uh the crossover, I was like, oh, Lex Luthor somehow was able to do something, you know, because it's evil genius Lex Luthor. Somehow he did something and he was able to make himself like this great person. And then I was like, well, that doesn't make sense because he, if he had full control, he would have killed everyone. But maybe he didn't, but he did something. And then I was like, no, it's the Anti-Monitor. They fight him. They have the crazy Power Rangers moment uh, where he grows tall. Um, there was a very specific scene with Supergirl that I thought was weird. And I think it was just to show how powerful she was. But it was like... It was supposed to be like this weird emotional thing and then it just cuts because um, Ray's like, hey, I got the, you know, I got the little shrink ball thing. And so it was the scene where she's flying and she's like really far away because Clark is uh, being grabbed by the anti-monitor and he's just squeezing him to death. And so she like charges in and then it's like she's flying and then she uses both arms and then she like puts both her arms back and she like shoots even faster. And I was like, okay, 
they made it seem like it was going to be emotional. And I think it was supposed to show that she was going to, like, basically try to kill the anti-monitor. Like, she was going to, like, shoot through him or something like that. But then they cut it, and Ray comes up, and she's just like, oh, and she stops midair. And I was like, when I first watched it, I was like, that was a really weird scene. And then the second time, I, I kind of caught it. Because they made it, like, this emotional thing, and then it just cuts out of nowhere. And I was like, that was really weird. And it still is kind of weird just the way it was done. Because it was, like, this weird buildup, but it was oddly ambiguous. Because it's like, she doesn't say what she's about to do or anything. So it's just like, she, it just looks like she's flying super fast. And I was like, I don't know if something special is supposed to happen here. And then, like I said, it just cuts. But when I watched it that second time, I was like, I think that was supposed to imply that she was, like, going to kill or, you know, do what she could to kind of, like, take down the anti-monitor. And the fact that she was flying so fast, we never actually seen it. Because it was clear that she was, like, going insanely fast. And I think that was just, like, a new level, you know, to her power. So I was like, okay. I feel like that could have been conveyed a little bit better. But it did, you know, it did work. At least on the second viewing, like I said, that first viewing, I was just like, that was weird. It was like this weird emotional moment that just ended. And I was like, that didn't make any sense. I was super confused the first time I saw it. I was like, that was weird. And then I kind of got it when I watched it that second time. Like, okay, this, it was kind of just showing pretty much something I think we should expect from uh, Supergirl going forward. A slight, you know, advancement, you know, advancement in her abilities and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to how the shows are going to change. Um, Lex Luthor being back is the big thing, so I'm most curious about Supergirl show and what they're going to do with that and Superman having his own show, but Lex Luthor coming back, they can do all the comic book stuff because when Supergirl started, Lex Luthor was already this murderer. He like did this, 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 this. he did a trillion things and now we're back to square one where it's like Lex Luthor's this great guy and he may or may not end up becoming president, which is a big thing, you know, in the comic universe where Lex becomes president. Uh, they even referenced that in the Smallville segment where it was like, um you know lex came or you know i think somebody else mentioned you know lex luther and then he mentioned how lex became the president and stuff like that so i thought that was super cool um but that i'm very excited for what they're gonna do for super i think all the other shows aside from arrow um but this is the last season for arrow anyway so anything that changes is gonna be like four episodes are changing you know stuff like that and he's supposed to come back in like the last episode or something so i'm looking forward to how that's gonna play out but this is really good. This is a really, really good crossover. They did some amazing stuff. All the crossovers were super cool. Um, you know, Flash from Justice League, that's insane. Smallville, Kevin Conroy, Birds of Prey, which even beyond the Justice excuse me, Justice League thing, to reference a show that got canceled within the first season. It I don't think it even finished. It may have finished the first season, but that show was canceled, canceled. It did not get two seasons. It doesn't have a cult following. It's not like, man. Birds of Prey was this great show that, you know, just got canceled too soon. Nobody talks about that show like that. No one gave a crap about Birds of Prey, and they still put that reference in. They got the actresses and everything. Um, actually, one of the actresses from Birds of Prey is in Batwoman. Like, the main villain in Batwoman was actually one of the actresses uh, in Birds of Prey. She, I think she was Huntress, actually. I think she was Huntress, and now she's Alice in, in Batwoman. So, crazy stuff like that, anyway. But... Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey, sixty six Batman, eighty nine Batman. I would, I, everyone wants this. I hope at some point we get Batman Beyond. I really thought they were gonna do it, um, and that would be amazing if they just made a reference to it. Like they just had old Batman, and then they had Terry McGinnis in there. People would have flipped. Um, but I don't think they're gonna do that reference until they have that show like ready to run. And they might save that for a movie, too. Like, who knows what Warner Brothers is officially going to do with that. I think it would be better as a show. Um, and maybe that's just because I don't trust DC movies right now. Um, and I prefer they just give it to, like, the TV writer. Just give it to Mark Guggenheim. He's the one who's got, like, his name on every effing thing. Um, but I don't know. I, I love the crossover. I don't know what they're going to do for the next one. But I assume it's going to be, like, the Justice League is fighting possibly the Legion of Doom. With the whole Lex Luthor, you know, kind of being seen as a good guy now. He can do all the stuff he's done, basically like in the old animated uh, Superman series. Everyone's like, it's Lex Luthor. He's this good guy. All the bad stuff he does, only Clark Kent slash Superman knows about it because Lex Luthor's smart enough to always find a way to hide from the public. But, you know, in Supergirl's universe, at least initially, he just got to the point where it was like, you know, eventually in the comics, it always gets to that point. And then, you know, something resets. But 
now that it's reset, I guess it's done that comic book thing. Everyone knew, and now it's reset again. And it's like, you know, it's the new 52 of uh, the TV versions of the show. Like, everything's on one Earth. All the heroes remember each other. Um, you know, they got their memories back, so they all remember anyone who didn't, at least. So I can't wait to see where they do what they do going forward. I'm looking forward to Stargirl. I'm going to check it out. Uh, we'll see what happens with that one. I'm curious about the robot. I don't know too much about... I don't know anything about a robot on the Justice Society at all, but I know Stargirl. I don't think it's the same actress that was in Legends of Tomorrow either. I don't think that was her, but I know I'm slightly familiar with Stargirl. They had um, one woman. I can't remember the name of the hero, but that hero was in Arrow. It was like the tiger person or panther or whatever, um, the the actual boxer. So I think it's like a 1940s version of that, and it's female because I noticed the costume. I was like, oh, that's definitely that hero. I just can't remember the name of that hero right now but i thought it was great like i cannot wait to see what they do going forward with all the shows admittedly but these next couple whatever this next crossover is going to be is going to be fun like obviously everything can't be crisis on infinite earth i don't expect that but this ending with them all being on one earth just the potential of that you know the characters being able to be in each other's shows a lot more often they may or may not end up canceling Batwoman, so she's probably going to get rolled into somebody else's show automatically anyway. Um, and who knows, you know, same could go for Supergirl. So we'll see what happens. They might just make a new crossover show, which I think would totally sell, even if people didn't like Batwoman and Supergirl separately. If they did a crossover show and, like, it was always the two of them together, I think people would love it. I think people would totally watch it, even if they hated the shows individually. They'd be like, but it's a crossover. It's a Batman, you know, it's Batwoman and Supergirl. I think people would watch it. So we'll see what happens. Um, Superman has two sons. I don't know what's going to happen with that. In general, I'm excited for everything going forward. So I, I love this crossover. There wasn't really anything that I remotely hated. I was just confused by the Speed Force segment, and that was really it. Um, which, you know, you guys can probably explain to me. I just don't understand what was going on there, where it was like Oliver was saying it's our greatest strengths and weaknesses but it seemed like everything was like his memories except for Sarah which Oliver wasn't even in that so Barry was kind of running through Oliver's memories to find everyone else even though Oliver said you have to find people based on their greatest strengths and weaknesses but he only found them based on Oliver's memories very confusing so if anyone has an explanation for that please explain it to me because I was just so confused I watched it a few times and I just I just didn't get it I was just like what is happening here I don't know but other than that I wasn't confused, and I love the crossover. I cannot wait to see what we get next year. And in general, it's like you don't even have to wait for the crossover. It's just like, well, when are they going to just throw somebody else in? So we'll have to wait and see. But I love this whole crossover. I loved all five episodes. It was amazing to me. Oliver Queen is Spectre. That's insane. He went into the Avatar state. That was funny to me. Um, I couldn't have been the only one that thought that. Like it, I was like, that looks like the, that was Avatar. That was the end of Avatar The Last Airbender. Um but in general, I absolutely loved it. We'll love to know what you guys thought about it. And we'll love to know things you didn't like. Um, what was just crappy to you? Like, I would love to know if there was something you thought was just plain bad. Um, what do you wish they added in? I would love to have seen uh, more Brandon Ralph Superman Returns. I was upset with that one, but it was great writing. I uh, would have loved to have seen, like I said, um, Batman Beyond. That would have been super cool. Um, I don't know. I mean, heck, if John Diggle just randomly got a ring at the end, that would have just been like icing on the cake who would hate that that would be amazing but i think they did a fantastic job it was all incredibly well done so i absolutely loved it and bebo was in it you know it ended on the uh technically the season premiere of legends of tomorrow and we got to see bebo again it was like classic classic comedy there for uh the legend at least but love the crossover like i said i want to know what you guys thought about it so please put your comments down in the comment section below and of course thanks for watching